everyone. Welcome to our November edition of our Ask the Expert interview series. We are happy to have uh, Lion Pet Ryan with us today from the Bluegrass Lions Diabetes Project. And um, sorry, we have a visitor. Um, November is Diabetes Awareness Month, and there are a lot of vision issues that are caused by diabetes. So we wanted to invite Lion Pat to talk about his project that he has started with the Lions Club and how he's working in the community. So <laughs> let me get him down. Pat, kind of, I'll let you kick off. You just tell us a little bit about why you started the Bluegrass Lions Diabetes Project. Sure, thank you, Jennifer. Good morning. Hello, everybody. Good to be back to talk about diabetes again with you. I attend my first Lions Club International Convention in Chicago in 2017, and that's the year that the, the LCI uh, officially adopted diabetes. It's one of their five main pillars. And uh, I was very excited to hear about that because my family has a history of diabetes and I have type two diabetes. I was uh, diagnosed in the year 2000 and things in uh, pretty good control for quite a while, but then later on, they got out of control. Um, <clears throat> my main problem was uh, not being as active as I used to be, and I put on a considerable amount of weight. I tell folks that uh, when I finally hit 270 on the scales, I just stopped looking. But it was probably well over 280. And uh, I remember a uh, doctor's visit. My glucose levels were elevated naturally, and A1C was up with that. But uh, when he said, I think you have chronic kidney disease, which is an outgrowth of diabetes, that's when I said, well, I think I better do something about this because my choices were either to go on dialysis, get a new kidney, or die. And I didn't like any of those three. And so I just said, yeah, this has got to come to a stop. And uh, over the next year and a half or so, I dropped well over 100 pounds and uh, was eating much healthier foods, not eating a bunch of junk foods, and uh, got more active, especially walking my dogs and things like that. So. Everything got under control, and that made me a, a big believer in the uh, idea that type two diabetes is definitely controllable. You can you can stave off any or most all of the bad results that having diabetes can cause. Um, I went from taking eight medications down to two medications now, and they're not related to uh, diabetes or anything. So in my personal life, I saw, hey, people can make a difference. They can live longer, see their kids grow up and watch their grandkids grow up and uh, have a much happier life because they're still active and able to get around. You don't have to be sitting in a little go-kart machine and pushing buttons and this and that or getting dialysis for kidneys or going blind with diabetic retinopathy. Um, so diabetes just has a tremendous effect all over the body because every blood vessel is affected. Diabetes is the leading cause of amputations, especially with the feet, toes, and legs. Um, leading cause of blindness with the diabetic retinopathy. I mean, it's a kind of kidney disease and just uh, many, many other things that go wrong in the body when the blood doesn't circulate correctly. And so what we want to do is help people through the diabetes project. We want to help people understand what their risks are. When we do a screening event, we start off with the uh, well-established paper pencil risk test that the CDC and the ADA, the American Diabetes Association, uh, that they put out. It's a simple seven question test. Just give you an idea about your risks. But then we also do the A1C screen. We do the finger stick and 
got a handy dandy little machine thing there and five minutes later you get your results and most of the um, research and doctors would say, well, if you get, they want to try to keep the A1C under seven, seven or below. But the folks that I've talked to, they're really into the research. They'd, they'd like to get it down to in the, at least in the sixes, hopefully below. Uh, the lower, the better. As long as, as long as it's not just bottomed out. You've got to have some glucose in the blood for sure. But we do the finger stick and tell the folks the results right then and there, and then we advise them. It's simple stuff again. So watch your diet. Try to cut out the junk foods. We tell folks you don't have to stop eating anything. There's no bad foods. But it's a matter of how much you eat of it, how often you eat them. So we want to get folks a heads up on where they stand, get them the, the help that they need with doctors and getting active and things like that. Very good. So I know when did you receive the grant funding to get this started and when did you all kick everything off? It's been going for a year or two now, but COVID has really put a halts on a lot of the screenings, I know, but just kind of give us the history of when you all started and kind of where you are now. Yeah, well, after that Chicago meeting, um, I started contacting other diabetes groups, folks that were involved with diabetes and so on, and uh, working especially with our Fayette County Diabetes Coalition. Um, they helped gather information to write to the grant to uh, support our need to do diabetes screening. And so it took uh, about a year to get it all together. And um, it was in November 2018, I believe, that we submitted it. And then the first LCIF Foundation board meeting was in January of 2019. And that's where they approved it. And then it was later on into uh, then in 2019 that we got the, the actual funding and we, we were doing some things in the meantime, uh, but then when the funding really came in, we were able to get our A1C kits purchased and, and all the other equipment we needed to uh, start lining up screening events and training people to do the screenings. So it was 2019 through uh, 2020, I think, February, late February 2020 was our, our last screening till COVID just slammed us shut. Now, this year, 2021, when the, in the early spring or late spring, early summer, when the numbers were, were going down and everything looked good before the Delta virus popped up, we actually did one more screening in Mount Sterling with the Lions Club. And, uh, but basically we've been shut down since February of 20, 2020. And the good news is with our numbers coming down again, I'm working with two um, student groups at the University of Kentucky. They're both in the School of Pharmacy. Uh, one works through the, their community service learning project and the others with their Kentucky Association of Pharmacy Students, CAPS. And so we're going to, uh, we're in the midst of setting up a screening event on, that would be a Friday the 18th or Thursday the 18th. I've checked it out. Uh, that's during the- Of November? November, yeah, that's yeah. during the week, diabetes week. Yeah, yeah, that's Thursday, the 18th. So that's hopefully the first uh, of many will get rescheduled and uh, get rolling again. Sounds good. Um, if anyone is interested in volunteering with you, how can they get in touch with you or learn more about the project and 
Um, as you all are starting to do more screenings, you'll, you'll need more volunteers. Hopefully more and more larger events will come up. So how can they get in touch with you or, or who do they get in touch with to try to get the training and all of that information? Sure, give me a call. Uh, can we put the phone number in the minute or the chat box or something? Yeah, we can. Let me do that right now. Okay. Or you can shoot me an email. I'll put them both in the chat box here. Sounds good. And I'll also put this in the description on the video just so that everyone has the information. There we go. Very good. All right. And Pat, I think you had some um, graph, a, a graph that you wanted to share just with information on, on what sure. your screening I'm results have been yeah. so far. Is okay. so that coming up okay? Yep, looks good. Okay. So you can kind of explain what this means to us. Sure. And can you see my cursor? Yes. Okay. So at this time, this is before our um, last screening at Mount Sterling. But when we shut down in, uh, in 20, we had um, performed over 700 A1C tests. We get results from those. And 65% were in a normal range, a good range. 34%, one third, a little over one third, were in an elevated range, with half of those being what we call the um, pre diabetes range, which is from 5.7 to 6.4. And then the other half, the other 17%, being in the uh, more or less diabetes range, which is over 6.5. Okay. Um, we always try to congratulate those folks that have a low A1C score and tell them keep on doing what you're doing and always watch your health, maintain your activity, watch what you eat and all that kind of stuff. These folks are our main target the pre-diabetes range, because that's where you can stop the pre-diabetes from becoming diabetes. If, like I did, you lose the weight, you eat healthy, you increase activity, that's where you can stop coming from here. You can go down into the good range. But if you don't, you can go up into the bad range, and that's where bad things start to happen. That's when you start losing some vision or lose a toe or something. Uh, that, that's not good in there. Diabetes is a chronic disorder. The longer you live, the longer diabetes has to work on you. So it is especially um, prevalent in seniors. The older you get, the more likely your odds of getting diabetes. But you don't have to have all the bad effects of diabetes. If you maintain that A1C, and hopefully get it down. For example, I think, as I recall, my highest A1C might have been like 8.6, well over here. Uh, my lowest, I think, was 4.8. I could really, really had, had changed my lifestyle. And uh, nowadays I'm, I'm still around the uh, five, six, five, seven kind of area. So it's, it's a daily thing. You can't take a pill for it. You don't have just a one shot thing to fix it and get done with. It is a daily decision. It's every meal that you eat. It's every time you get hungry for some snacks. Uh, you got to make the right decision to eat healthy snacks 
or very much limit uh, the, the snacks that you do eat that are that could be very unhealthy if you eat too much of it. So our goal was to, uh, in the first year of the grant, to, to uh, screen a thousand Kentuckians, and we were blasting away at that goal. We were, we were going to blow that goal out until COVID stopped. So we, we got to get back on track with uh, screening people. And I would love to go to any place, any number um, of folks that gather together that want some diabetes screening, diabetes education. If you want me to come to a, a meeting and talk about it, and I can give you a more full-blown story about everything. But the main thing is to, to get people aware of where they stand, what group they're in, and then what they can do about it. Get them the help that they need. That's one question that I have, Pat, is um, if someone is screened and they are in that pre-diabetes segment, what um, materials or what offerings does the project pr provide to kind of guide them to changes that they need to make? Number one thing, see your doctor. Make sure they're aware of your A1C score. Um, have it regularly checked from then on. And probably the best thing, the best piece of advice I can give somebody uh, is to talk to a nutritionist or a diabetes educator and hopefully through them or through your doctor, get enrolled in a diabetes prevention program, DPP. Now, the... Kentucky Diabetes Network is a, an association, a network of everybody in Kentucky that is pretty much doing anything with diabetes. They have a great website at kdn.org. Um, and they have a list there of all the diabetes prevention programs throughout the whole state. Um, in our program, when we do the screening, we, we bring literature with us. And we bring hard copies of those DPP programs that are available. So we, we try to get folks to uh, seek the professional help. When I started losing my weight and changing things around, I was talking to uh, a diabetes educator who also happened to be a nutritionist. And that's where I got my main advice and, and uh, got checked on regularly. The DPP programs are... Uh, programs that meet, they start off weekly, and then they go to every other week, and then they a monthly thing, and then things like that. But they, they give you the tools mm -hmm. that you need to change your lifestyle. And they, it's a little bit of coaching, a little bit of uh, group therapy, I guess you call it, because we get to share our stories and uh, talk to each other and, and encourage each other to do the right things to keep those A1C levels down and diabetes from doing bad things to your body. All right. Well, Pat, before we wrap up, is there anything else that you want to add? Um, we're kind of coming in on our time here, but if you have anything else you want to add, feel free to throw anything in. Um, two things. We have our diabetes line, excuse me, our Blue Cross Lion Diabetes Project website, which unfortunately we couldn't come up with any cool name, so it's just bluegrasslionsdiabetesproject.com. And uh, you can check on there for what's going on, our, our, our numbers, and, and if you need to donate to us, we've got to maintain uh, the ability to buy our equipment so we can go out and do our screenings. But uh, I'd be glad, to, again, to talk with anybody, share information with any group, and would love to come to your locations and, and do screenings for you. That sounds good. And I just want to apologize for Duke's special appearances here. We'll let him say hi here. Come in. Well, now he's not going to do it. Here, here you go. Look, look, look. There's Duke. 
but sorry for his appearance in the in the video here but he's uh reminding me that it's almost time to take him for a walk later so we'll get our steps in today so thanks pat for jumping on here with me and hope you have a good rest of the day and we'll talk to you soon oh thank you so much for the opportunity have a great day jennifer okay.